Hello students, welcome to the session. I will be doing medical parasitology topic here and my topic for this video is methods for the diagnosis of parasitic infection. So to diagnose a parasitic infection, we have various methods available. The most important one is microscopy technique. So you collect the sample from the patient and see the sample under microscope that will help you to diagnose or get an idea about which parasitic infection it is. Other than that, we have other methods including skin test, molecular method like PCR, immunodiagnosis where you can detect the presence of antigen or antibody in the serum sample collected from the patient, histopathology, culture techniques, imaging techniques or animal inoculation. What are the samples we collect for this lab diagnosis for the parasitic infection? First most important blood sample. So wet film or the stain film of the blood sample is made and we can detect the presence of parasite in that. Then we have stool sample, urine sample, swabs collected from the patient. Other than that in some cases for example in case of androbius vermicularis parasitic infection we can go for perianal swab which is uh, named as cellophane tape method or national institute of health swab technique so this is one sample which we collect from endrobius infection it is endrobiasis another one duodenal contents can be conducted uh, contents can be collected for example in case of giardia intestinalis giardiasis we can directly demonstrate the presence of adult parasite or the parts by collecting duodenal aspirate now we'll go to the first and the most important method of diagnosing parasitic infection that is microscopy examination of the sample here major two samples which are collected for microscopic examinations are stool examination and peripheral blood sample other than that urine sputum aspirate urogenitor specimen or csf also can be collected and go for microscopic examination we'll start with stool examination for the, it is used mainly for the demonstration of adult worm segments of the parasites in some parasites for example tinea species you get the segments of the parasite in the stool sample eggocyst trophozoid or larva stage along with that along with the parasite or its parts or the some of the morphology we can detect wbc rbc macrophages charcoal ladle crystals how do we collect it well, co collecting, you have to see that you are collecting the sample before the patient start his antiparasitic drug. Then it should be co collected in a plastic cup, white mouth and clean and leak proof container and it should not be mixed with bedpan with the disinfectant. It should not be contaminated with urine or any other dirty particle and you should label the specimen. Multiple samples can be screened to not to miss the um, organism in the sample preservation in case there is a delay you can preserve your sample with polyvinyl alcohol or 10 percent formalin what we analyze we have two types of analysis for the stool sample macroscopy analysis and microscopic analysis macroscopically we look for the color what is the color consistency order and what is the ph presence of other things like rbc mucus pus fat and presence of parasite Microscopically, we look for presence of RBC, pus cells, bacteria and parasite. Methods, what we do? Microscopy, we look for the consistency. It, it, in case of par parasite where you find cyst form of the parasite, the usually the consistency of the stool sample will be formed. It will be watery in case of uh, infection where you can find there is a chance of getting trophozoid infections, where you can find trophozoids in the sample. Then in case of giardiasis, the sample itself look frothy with pale offensive uh, smell. And then presence of worms and proglottids can be detected. Example like round worm, thread worm, you can detect as adult worm itself, you can find it in the stool sample. If it is tape worm, you can see the segments as you see in the picture. Bloody sample, we usually get in acute amoebic dysentery or invasive balantidiasis infection, you get bloody uh, sample. But if the color of the blood, if it is dark red, you assume that it may be an upper GIT bleeding, upper, upper gastrointestinal bleeding. And if you see the blood sample, which is bright red color, then you think of bleeding from lower um, gastrointestinal tract. Then we have microscopy technique. Microscopically what we do is we make the wet mount. So wet mount is made with saline or iodine um, sample. 
so iodine metamount and saline metamount then in case it goes for a negative and the patients are still symptomatic we go for the concentration technique what you see you find all the normal constituents along with the cellular elements and charcoal ladle crystals so in case of saline wet mount we mainly look for helminth egg this helminth eggs will be present or strong yellowed stercorals larvae will be present trophozoite will be present so we just take a slide and put the sample and add saline uh, saline keep a cover slip observe it under microscope you can look for the motility of the trophozoid you can see rbc wbc and eggs of the parasite cysts are not um, seen in this because of the structure which is refractile cysts are refractile structure so you may not be able to appreciate in the saline wet mount then we go for iodine wet mount with 1% lugol iodine you take a slide put the sample put 1% lugol iodine keep a cover slip observe it under microscope here we can see cyst presence of glycogen nuclei inside the cyst then we can go for permanent slide so saline wet mount iodine wet mount third one permanent slide preparation hematoxylin eosin can be used for the detection of oocysts of cryptosporidium protozoa and trophozoite we can go for permanent slide preparation so we'll go for the direct wet mount here what are the normal structures we can expect in the normal direct uh, saline wet mount we see plant fiber starch cell bacteria and uh, pus cells rbc charcoal laden crystals these charcoal laden crystals or cl crystals will be diamond shape and it indicate the breakdown product of eosinophil usually happens in parasitic infection like amoebic dysentery or ascariasis then we can see trophozoite cyst of protozoa egg, egg, egg and larvae of helminthes then advantage of saline wet mount is that you can detect trophozoite cyst of protozoa egg larvae of helminths motility of trophozoites which is very important which can be detected only in saline wet mount and you can always uh, distinguish the um, bile stained egg and non bile stained egg in saline wet mount because bile stained egg will be brown in color non bile stained egg will be colorless so these are the example for non bile stained egg ankylostoma duodenal egg here hymenolepis nana enterobius vermicularis and nicator americanus how do we differentiate egg of different parasite you look at the shape of it you look at the size then you have you can see whether it is brown or not that is bile stained or not any marking on the egg presence of granules ovum how it is made operculum present or not hooklets presence of hooklets these are some of the features where you can differentiate different types of parasitic egg as you see in the picture it will have different morphology which will help us to identify which is the parasitic egg so you can see here hookworm parasitic egg tinea egg you can see the presence of hooklets inside so what why we do iodine wet mount iodine wet mount is uh, used um, we use lugol iodine 1% lugol iodine for preparation of this and you can see cyst helminthic egg and larval stage but as the iodine kill parasite we cannot see the motility and another disadvantage here is that bile staining property is not appreciated then we go for the permanent st uh, stain smear iron and uh, hematoxylin stain trichome stain and modified acid fast staining is used for cryptosporidium pavum and isospora belli so here we complete this video session i'll be continuing with the lab diagnosis of parasitic infection in my next video thank you